In this video, I will be talking about some of the most underrated open world games you should give a try. I am sure you will find at least a few games to add to your list. Now we all have played the popular titles like RDR2 or GTA 5, so this list will be a great choice to experience something different. Now let's look at the first game on our list. The Saboteur. The Saboteur is one of those games that somehow slipped through the cracks, but if you dive into it today, you'll find a hidden gem. This game brings a unique vibe by setting its open world adventure in Nazi-occupied Paris during World War II, where you play as Sean Devlin, an Irish race car driver turned resistance fighter. Now, that's a hell of a concept, right? What sets the Saboteur apart is its use of color, literally. When you first enter areas controlled by the Nazis, everything is drained of life, represented by a black and white aesthetic. But as you liberate neighborhoods and complete missions, color returns to those areas, and it feels incredibly rewarding. It's a simple mechanic, but damn it works. This game leans heavily on stealth, sabotage, and some chaotic action. You'll find yourself climbing buildings like Assassin's Creed and engaging in gunfights that get messy fast perfect for players who enjoy a bit of unpredictability. It doesn't have the polish of newer AAA games, but that's part of its charm. The vibe is gritty, jazzy, and oddly fun thanks to the soundtrack and noir-inspired visual style. Though it's got flaws, some clunky mechanics, and a few odd AI moments, but if you're looking for an open world game that does things differently this one is worth the shot. There's something special about taking down an enemy installation with dynamite and sneaking away just as the Eiffel Tower lights up in the background. If you're tired of cookie cutter open worlds, the saboteur will give you something fresh and memorable. <laughs> Kingdoms of Amalur Reckoning Kingdoms of Amalur Reckoning is one of those games that deserved way more love than it got. It dropped back in 2012 and while it came out around the same time as heavyweights like Skyrim, this RPG did its own thing and honestly, it did it damn well. It's got one of the most satisfying combat systems you'll ever experience in an open world RPG. If you're into fluid, fast paced action where every swing of your sword or blast of magic feels powerful, Amalur will spoil you. The world itself is vast, colorful, and packed with lore designed by none other than R.A. Salvatore, yeah, the fantasy author behind the Drizzt do Erden novels. The game has this unique mix of high fantasy and vibrant visuals, setting it apart from the usual dark, gritty tones we see in open world RPGs. From lush forests to dangerous caverns, the environments just feel alive, and exploring them never gets old. What really makes Amalur underrated though is the freedom it gives you. You can completely respect your character on the fly, switching from a sneaky rogue to a spell slinging sorcerer or even a bruiser wielding massive hammers. And unlike a lot of RPGs, it rewards experimentation instead of locking you into a boring archetype. The story might not hit you with deep emotional moments, but the world building and lore suck you in if you give it the time. Sleeping Dogs. Sleeping Dogs is the definition of a cult classic, and man, if you missed it, you missed out on something special. This game takes the open world formula we all know Think GTA, but spices it up with an incredible setting Hong Kong. It's gritty, chaotic, and just oozing with atmosphere. The story throws you into the shoes of Wei Shen, an undercover cop infiltrating the triads, and it pulls no punches when it comes to drama, betrayal, and brutal combat. What makes Sleeping Dogs shine is its focus on hand to hand combat. If you're a fan of games like the Yakuza series, you'll feel right at home. The martial arts mechanics are tight, brutal, and honestly, they never get old, especially when you slam a thug's head into a fish tank mid-fight. It's got that street brawler energy, but it's also got car chases, shootouts, and even undercover missions that add a ton of variety. It's just straight up fun from start to finish. Beyond the action, the game nails its open world design by blending the urban sprawl of Hong Kong with quieter cultural moments. You'll find yourself getting lost inside activities like street racing, betting on cockfights, or even just grabbing some dim sum at a local food stall. It's these little touches that make the world feel alive and different from the usual American city sandbox. It's wild that this game didn't blow up like it should have, maybe because it didn't have the marketing push or big name recognition, but trust me, Sleeping Dog 
Dogs is one of those games that sticks with you long after the credits roll. It's the kind of game that makes you wish there had been a sequel, and honestly, if you're itching for an open world experience with heart-pounding action and an unforgettable story, this is the one to try. Dying Light Dying Light took the open world formula and flipped it literally by adding parkour into the mix and damn it works so well. This game drops you in Heron, a fictional Middle Eastern city overrun by the undead, and the way it handles exploration makes it feel unlike anything else. Instead of sticking to streets or cars, you're running along rooftops, vaulting over fences, and making every move count because the ground is where things get real dangerous. The day-night cycle here? Brutal. During the day, zombies are slow and manageable, but the second the sun sets, all hell breaks loose. The infected become faster, stronger, and way more terrifying, and suddenly that little rooftop you were standing on doesn't feel so safe anymore. There's this constant tension between freedom and fear, and it's what makes dying light stand out in the sea of open world games. It's not just exploration, it's survival. Combat also slaps. It's weighty, gory, and chaotic with an emphasis on melee weapons that you can modify to add electricity, fire, or even toxic effects. Guns are scarce, so every encounter feels raw like you're always just barely scraping by. And the missions? They keep things interesting with a mix of scavenging, saving survivors, and unraveling a surprisingly decent story. Despite its massive open world and dynamic gameplay, Dying Light often flew under the radar, probably overshadowed by the flood of zombie games at the time. But it deserves a second chance because few open world games nail the balance between exploration and fear as well as this one. Plus, if you haven't already, the co-op mode is insanely fun. There's nothing like running for your life at night with a friend, screaming your head off as a volatile chases you across the rooftops. This one deserves a spot on your backlog if it's not already there. And hey, with the sequel out, it's the perfect excuse to dive back in. Biomutant Biomutant is an ambitious open world game that brings a unique blend of kung fu action, RPG elements, and post-apocalyptic exploration. You play as a customizable mutant animal, armed with both melee weapons and firearms, while also unlocking strange abilities like telekinesis or the power to shoot bubbles. It's quirky, colorful, and filled with charm, making it stand out from more serious open world games. The world of Biomutant is absolutely worth exploring with its vibrant biomes, mutated creatures, and relics of a lost human civilization scattered everywhere. You're free to craft your weapons, align with different factions, and even shape the outcome of the story through a morality system. And though it tries to pack in a lot, sometimes a bit too much it offers a solid mix of exploration and fast-paced combat. Fuck. Rage 2. Rage 2 might not have taken the world by storm, but damn it's a wild ride that deserves way more attention. Developed by Avalanche Studios and ID Software, this game throws you into a chaotic, open world wasteland where everything explodes, and I mean everything. It's got that Mad Max vibe mixed with neon punk aesthetics making it look both brutal and colorful at the same time. What sets Rage 2 apart is its combat. The gunplay is fluid, fast, and ridiculously satisfying exactly what you'd expect from the maker of do. It's not just about shooting though you also unlock insane abilities like ground pounding enemies into dust or using a force push to send them flying. Combine that with weapons like the grab dart launcher which lets you pull enemies toward walls, cliffs, or each other, and you've got a recipe for non-stop chaos. The open world is packed with bandit hideouts, convoys, mutants, and crazy characters that keep things unpredictable. Admittedly, the story feels like an afterthought, and the world itself can seem a little empty at times, but who cares when the combat is this good? Rage 2 isn't about deep storytelling, it's about blowing things up and having a blast while doing it. ALS 
Alex is one of those loved or hated open world RPGs, but if you stick with it, you'll find an experience unlike anything else out there. Developed by Piranha Bytes, the same team behind the Gothic and Risen series that throws you into a strange, post-apocalyptic world where science fiction collides with fantasy. Think jetpacks, swords, futuristic guns, and magic all mashed together. Yeah, it's a weird mix, but that's exactly what makes Alex so interesting. The world is massive and full of factions, each with its own philosophies and playstyles. Whether you join the Berserkers, who reject technology and rely on magic, or the Outlaws, who live for chaos and scavenging, your choices shape the way the story unfolds. It's one of those games where exploration feels rewarding every ruin or abandoned settlement holds some loot or lore that deepens your understanding of this bizarre world. We bow to no one. Combat though can be a bit clunky and the game doesn't hold your hand. Right from the start, enemies are brutal and you'll probably die a lot until you figure out how to survive. But if you're the type of player who enjoys a challenge and likes to feel your character's progression, Alex delivers. The jetpack alone adds a fun twist to exploration, letting you scale cliffs and bypass obstacles in creative ways. Far Cry Primal Far Cry Primal is one of the more overlooked entries in the Far Cry series, but it deserves way more credit for how boldly it shakes up the formula. Instead of guns and cars, you're dropped into the Stone Age, playing as Takar, a hunter trying to reunite and protect his tribe. It's a fascinating take on the open world genre, focusing entirely on primitive weapons like spears, bows, and clubs. The setting is what really makes Primal stand out. The world of Oros feels wild and alive, with mammoths, saber-toothed tigers, and dangerous wildlife lurking around every corner. You're not just a hunter here, you're also prey. Survival plays a major role, and you'll need to gather resources to craft weapons, tame animals, and even build out your village. The animal taming mechanic is especially cool, letting you ride beasts or send your wolf to take out enemies for you. Great expanse of land. Sure, it lacks the modern chaos of other Far Cry games, there's no wild gunfights or helicopters here, but it offers a more grounded experience. The brutal hand-to-hand -hand combat and immersive environment make it feel like a fresh change of pace from the typical formula. It might not have been everyone's cup of tea at launch, but Far Cry Primal deserves a second chance. If you're looking for an open world game that throws you into a completely different era and makes you fight to survive, this one is worth revisiting. Just Cause 2. Just Cause 2 is pure, unfiltered chaos, and that's exactly what makes it so damn fun. Set in the sprawling open world of the fictional island nation of Pano, this game gives you one job cause as much destruction as possible. You play as Rico Rodriguez, an agent with a grappling hook a parachute, and zero concern for subtlety. What makes Just Cause 2 stand out is how it embraces freedom and insanity. Want to tether a car to a helicopter and fling it into a military base? Go for it. Feel like surfing on top of a jet mid-flight? Absolutely. The game isn't about deep storytelling, it's about giving you a giant sandbox where explosions and stunts are your playground. Kanao is massive, offering deserts, jungles, snowy mountains, and cities to explore. Every corner of the map hides some ridiculous opportunity for destruction, and the grappling hook lets you approach it however you want. It's the kind of game where you'll get sidetracked for hours just messing around with vehicles and physics. Sure, the missions can get repetitive, and the story isn't exactly memorable, but that's not the point. Just Cause 2 is all about creating your own moments of madness, and few open world games do that as well as this one. If you want a game where blowing things up is always the right answer, you need to give this one a shot. Greedfall Greedfall is a hidden gem in the world of RPGs, offering an open world experience that feels like a blend of classic Bioware storytelling and fresh exploration. Set in a 17th century inspired fantasy world, you play as D. Sardite, a diplomat trying to forge alliances, uncover secrets, and find a cure for a mysterious plague. The game's world is filled with magic, political intrigue, and ancient mysteries, making it perfect for players who love a story-rich experience. What makes Greedfall 
Freefall stand out is its focus on choice and consequence, whether it's deciding which factions to ally with or how you approach quests through diplomacy, stealth, or combat your decisions shape the world around you. The characters you meet are well written, with layered personalities and forming alliances or enemies with them makes every interaction feel significant. After this little swim, you could always try to pull the trigger. The game's combat is solid with a mix of swordplay, magic and ranged attacks, but where it really shines is the world building. Every area you explore has a distinct feel, with dense forests, mystical ruins, and bustling towns that reflect the game's mix of colonial and fantasy elements. Sure, the game doesn't have the massive budget of a AAA title, and you'll notice that in some animations and limited enemy variety, but it more than makes up for it with heart and ambition. Greedfall is one of those games that might not have gotten the attention it deserved at launch, but it's well worth your time. If you're into story-driven RPGs with meaningful choices and an immersive world, this one's definitely worth a shot. Man-Eater Man-Eater is one of the weirdest and most entertaining open-world games out there, and that's exactly why you need to give it a chance. You play as a shark, yes, a shark, swimming through the waters of the Gulf Coast, devouring everything from fish to humans. It's part action RPG, part survival, and a whole lot of absurd fun. What makes Man-Eater special is how it embraces its ridiculous premise. As you level up, your shark evolves in crazy ways growing bone armor, electrical fins, or even toxic lands. It's pure, over-the-top madness, and the game encourages you to become the apex predator of the ocean. The map offers plenty to explore, from swampy bios to deep ocean trenches, and every area has its own challenges and creatures waiting to bite back. The story is framed like a reality TV show, complete with a sarcastic narrator commenting on your carnage. It's hilarious, weirdly engaging, and makes the game's chaos even more enjoyable. While the combat can get repetitive, there are only so many ways to chomp down on prey it never really gets old, thanks to how absurdly fun the whole experience is. The Hunter Call of the Wild Imagine walking through a dense forest at dawn, mist hanging low, birds chirping in the distance, and then, somewhere in the far brush, the faint crack of a twig. That's the hunter call of the wild. It's not your typical open world game, it's quiet, methodical, and peaceful until it isn't. This game isn't about fast-paced action, it's about immersing yourself in nature, learning patience, and feeling the thrill of tracking prey across stunning landscapes. What really makes Call of the Wild stand out is the atmosphere. Whether you're in the forest, of Hirschfelden or the snowy wilderness of Medv Taiga, every inch of the world feels alive. Animals react realistically to your movements and sounds, so hunting here isn't just aim and shoot, it's an art of careful planning. You'll spend a lot of time crouched in the brush, scanning the horizon and second guessing every step. If you're looking for non-stop action, this isn't your game. But if you want an experience where every successful hunt feels earned, this one nails it. The world isn't just a backdrop, it's your playground with everything from small birds to massive moose roaming free. And even if hunting isn't your thing, exploring the environment on foot or on your ATV is incredibly relaxing. Sure, not everyone has the patience for this kind of game, but if you give it a chance, the hunter call of the wild offers an experience that's both serene and intense, with with just the right amount of tension to keep you hooked. It's the kind of game you didn't know you needed until you find yourself totally lost in it. Ghost Recon Wildlands when it comes to open world experiences, Ghost Recon Wildlands delivers something that few other games attempt an entire country as your playground. Set in a massive version of Bolivia, this game offers everything dense jungles, snow-capped mountains, sprawling salt flats, and bustling villages. The sheer scale of the open world is mind-blowing, and it gives you complete freedom to tackle missions however you want. Want to go in guns blazing? Sure! Prefer sneaking through the jungle with silenced weapons? Go for it. Or maybe you just feel like hopping in a helicopter and scouting out your next objective from the skies, it's all up to you. The game gives you so many ways to approach every situation that no two missions feel the same. It's a tactical shooter at heart, but the open world structure lets you play at your own pace, whether solo or in co-op with friends. 
The dynamic world adds another layer of immersion. You'll run into patrols, civilians, or cartel members mid-mission, forcing you to think on your feet. And the variety is impressive one moment you're creeping through a forest at night to capture a drug lord, the next you're speeding across a desert while dodging gunfire. It's the kind of game where the open world setting isn't just a backdrop, it's an essential part of the experience. Yonder the Cloud Catcher Chronicles. Sometimes you just want an open world game without the stress of combat, and that's exactly where Yonder the Cloud Catcher Chronicles shines. This game takes the usual open world formula and strips it down to its most relaxing elements exploration, discovery, and community building. It drops you on the lush island of Jamia, filled with vibrant forests, peaceful beaches, and charming towns, and then it simply lets you explore at your own pace. What makes Yonder special is how it encourages you to live in the world rather than conquer it. Instead of battles, you'll spend your time helping villagers, farming, crafting, and solving little environmental puzzles. There's an almost therapeutic quality to it like playing Animal Crossing, but with way more room to roam. The freedom to explore is the real heart of the experience, with each biome offering new things to see and quests to complete. There's a light story about clearing away a mysterious fog called the Merc, but it's not the driving force exploring the island and making it your own is. The game rewards curiosity and makes even the smallest discoveries feel meaningful. If you love open worlds for the sake of exploration and immersion, Yonder delivers that without overwhelming you with objectives or enemies. It's a peaceful, feel-good take on the open world genre perfect for when you need a break from combat-heavy games. If you're in the mood to slow down, breathe in some virtual fresh air, and just enjoy the scenery, Yonder the Cloudcatcher Chronicles is a game you shouldn't overlook. Bison 3 Titan Lords Ryzen 3 Titan Lords throws you into a pirate-infested fantasy world, blending swashbuckling adventures with RPG elements. At its core, the game is about exploration scouring islands, ancient ruins, and dangerous jungles in search of treasure and power. You take on the role of a nameless hero whose soul has been stolen, and your journey is all about finding a way to reclaim it, but that's just scratching the surface. The game's world is packed with secrets, and it doesn't hand them to you on a silver platter. Unlike many modern open-world games, games, Risen 3 expects you to explore on your own. Quest markers? Minimal. You'll have to follow clues from conversations, make mental notes of landmarks, and dive into caves that may not even have a quest attached just because you can. It's got that figure it out yourself vibe, which feels refreshing if you're tired of open worlds that hold your hand every step of the way. Combat is tough and can be unforgiving early on, but the deeper you go, the more satisfying it becomes. Sword fights, muskets and spells each approach has its own learning curve and the enemies don't pull punches. And then there are the factions you'll need to align yourself with groups like the demon hunters or mages, each offering distinct powers and storylines. Your decisions carry weight, with faction alliances and reputation shaping how NPCs treat you and what quests you unlock. Immortals Phoenix Rising Immortals Phoenix Rising is like a breath of fresh air in the open world genre. It takes the familiar elements from games like Breath of the Wild exploration, puzzles, and freedom and wraps them in a vibrant world inspired by Greek mythology. You play as Phoenix, a mortal who finds themselves thrust into a journey to save the gods from the powerful titan Typhon. But what makes this game stand out is how it embraces a lighthearted, playful tone while still delivering solid gameplay. The world of the Golden Isle is stunning, divided into several regions, each themed around a specific god like Ares or Athena. Every area feels unique and offers a blend of platforming challenges, puzzles, and combat encounters. You'll climb cliffs, glide across open skies, and solve environmental puzzles in shrines called Vaults of Tartaros, each rewarding you with new abilities or upgrades. These vaults scratch that brain teaser itch without ever becoming frustrating, keeping the pace breezy and fun. 
combat in Immortals is fast and fluid, with a satisfying mix of swordplay, bows, and divine powers like summoning a giant hammer from the heavens. You can unlock and upgrade abilities, allowing for some crazy combos, especially when you start chaining aerial attacks or hurling boulders at enemies. It's flashy and accessible, but offers enough depth to keep things engaging throughout the game. What sets Immortals apart from more serious open-world titles is its humor and charm. The narrative is narrated by Zeus and Prometheus who banter constantly adding a layer of comedy to the adventure. Some jokes land better than others, but it keeps the tone light and easy going, which works well given the game's colorful and whimsical presentation. It might not have been a massive hit at launch, but Immortals Phoenix Rising is a game that's perfect for those looking for an open world experience without the emotional weight of something like The Witcher 3. It's all about exploration, discovery, and having fun, something a lot of open world games tend to forget. If you're after a game that doesn't take itself too seriously but still offers a big, beautiful world to explore, this one deserves a shot. Middle Earth Shadow of War Middle Earth Shadow of War takes the foundations of its predecessor, Shadow of Mordor, and cranks everything up to 11. It drops you right into the heart of a sprawling open world, with multiple regions across Mordor and beyond, each teeming with orcs, fortresses, and chaos. What makes it stand out is the nemesis system, an evolving mechanic where enemies remember their interactions with you, hold grudges, and even come back stronger if they defeat you. No two playthroughs feel exactly the same because your enemies adapt and grow, sometimes turning personal rivalries into epic, unexpected moments. The open world design here is all about giving you choices. Want to storm an orc stronghold with an army of your own or sneak in and assassinate key targets one by one. The game lets you approach every challenger way as you capture and defend fortresses, recruit orcs to your cause, and carve out your own slice of Mordor, you feel like you're building your own story with each battle. Combat is fast, fluid, and brutal, combining swordplay, stealth, and supernatural abilities. Executing perfect counters and chaining attacks feels incredibly satisfying, especially when you're surrounded by a swarm of orcs. Add in the ability to dominate and recruit enemies to your side, and the game opens up in exciting ways turning former enemies into valuable allies is a special kind of power trip. The world of Shadow of War is dark, atmospheric, and surprisingly varied. From snowy peaks to fiery volcanic landscapes, each region feels distinct and filled with things to do, like hunting down collectibles, challenging enemy captains, or uncovering ancient artifacts tied to the lore of Middle-earth. The story has its highs and lows, but it nails that epic fantasy vibe, giving fans of Tolkien's world plenty to dive into. The Outer Worlds The Outer Worlds delivers an open-world RPG experience that feels like a throwback to classic Fallout games with a vibrant spacefaring twist. Developed by Obsidian Entertainment, the minds behind Fallout New Vegas, it offers a world full of quirky characters, sharp dialogue, and player-driven choices that shape the story. Instead of one sprawling map, the game spreads its open world across multiple planets and space stations, each with its own ecosystems, factions, and stories to uncover. What what makes the outer world stand out is the freedom it gives you in shaping your character and the world around you. Whether you want to be a charming con artist, a brute who solves everything with a shotgun, or an engineer obsessed with tinkering, the game supports your playstyle. Your choices matter not just in dialogue but also in combat encounters and faction relationships. There's always more than one way to complete a mission, whether through diplomacy, stealth, or chaos. The tone of the game is quirky and humorous, often taking jabs at corporate greed with its dystopian but colorful world. From the moment you step off your spaceship, you'll meet bizarre NPCs like employees who speak in mind-numbing corporate jargon or scientists with ridiculous experiments. This mix of humor and dark themes creates a unique vibe that sets it apart from other open-world RPGs. 
exploration is a treat too. Each location, whether it's a lush forest moon or a dusty space outpost, feels distinct and filled with secrets. Loop side quests and lore wait around every corner, and the game constantly rewards curiosity. The combat, while not groundbreaking, is engaging with a variety of weapons ranging from plasma rifles to shrink rays, all of which can be upgraded or modded to suit your playstyle, though it's not as large scale as some open world RPGs, the Outer Worlds makes up for it with its tight storytelling, interesting characters, and the freedom to approach missions your way. If you're after an open world game that values choice, humor, and exploration, this one is absolutely worth a chance. Scarlet Nexus Scarlet Nexus offers an open world experience with a twist blending RPG elements, fast paced combat, and a cyberpunk inspired setting with a heavy dose of anime flair. It's set in a futuristic world where strange mutants called Others descend from the sky, and humanity's last line of defense is a group of elite soldiers with psychic abilities. You play as either Yudo or Kassan, two members of the Other Suppression Force OSF, and each character's story offers a different perspective on the unfolding events. While Scarlet Nexus isn't a traditional open world game, its semi-open design invites exploration across sprawling urban environments. Think large cityscapes, research facilities, and post-apocalyptic zones that encourage you to wander off the beaten path. Scattered throughout these areas are side missions, lore items, and materials to enhance your weapons and abilities. Exploring between combat sequences offers some downtime to dig into the world's story and deepen your relationships with party members. The combat is where the game truly shines. It's fast, flashy, and rewards creativity mixing melee attacks with telekinetic powers. You can hurl cars, lampposts, and even chunks of buildings at enemies, creating chaotic, satisfying combos. On top of that, you can temporarily borrow abilities from your companions like invisibility, pyrokinesis, or increased speed adding layers of strategy to every fight. The game encourages experimentation and the difficulty ramps up in ways that keep things exciting. Another standout feature is the bond system, where spending time with your teammates unlocks new abilities and deeper character interactions. These moments add emotional weight to the game and make the characters feel more than just combat partners they become part of your journey. Though the open world structure is more segmented than sprawling, Scarlet Nexus offers enough freedom and exploration to scratch that itch for players who enjoy RPG elements within a dynamic environment. If you're looking for a game that delivers tight combat mechanics with a side the story rich exploration Scarlet Nexus is worth diving into. Mafia 2. Mafia 2 is an open world game with a heavy focus on storytelling, and it nails that cinematic mobster movie vibe perfectly. Set in the 1940s and 50s, you play as Vito Scaletta, a young war veteran trying to climb the ranks of organized crime in the fictional city of Empire Bay. The game isn't about causing chaos for the sake of it, it's about living through Vito's journey, experiencing the highs and lows of a life bound by loyalty, betrayal, and ambition. What sets Mafia 2 apart from other open world world games is how committed it is to its narrative. The city of Empire Bay feels alive, with snowy streets in winter and bustling diners and bars in the summer, but the game keeps the focus on Vito's personal story. This isn't a playground of side activities, it's a period piece where every mission feels like another chapter in a movie. And that's part of the charm. You won't be flooded with endless distractions instead. The world serves as a beautiful atmospheric backdrop to a tightly written story. The combat mixes satisfying gunplay with brutal hand-to-hand -hand fights, and the driving mechanics capture that classic 1940s feel where every car has weight and power. The attention to detail in everything from radio broadcasts to clothing styles helps immerse you in the era, making you feel like you've stepped into a classic gangster film. The working man's a sucker, that's for damn sure. Everspace 2. Everspace 2 takes the open world formula into the vastness of space, blending fast paced dogfighting with RPG elements and exploration. Unlike your typical space sim, this game focuses more on action and storytelling than complex flight mechanics, making it feel like an open world game set among the stars. You pilot a variety of customizable ships, travel through asteroid fields, derelict stations, and distant planets, 
all while upgrading your gear and uncovering the mysteries of the galaxy, one thing that stands out is the freedom it gives you. Each sector of space is packed with things to do side missions, hidden loot, puzzles, and intense battles. Whether you're raiding outlaw bases, salvaging wrecked ships, or hunting for rare resources in dangerous nebulae, Everspace 2 always rewards exploration. There's something exciting about just flying off in a direction, not knowing what you'll stumble across next. Combat is fast and fluid, with a satisfying mix of lasers, missiles, and unique ship abilities. Each ship class offers a different playstyle whether you prefer nimble fighters or heavy hitting gunships. Upgrading your ship with better weapons, shields, and perks adds an RPG-like progression system that feels rewarding as you progress through the game. If you're looking for an open world experience but want something beyond the usual RPG or sandbox, Everspace 2 offers a refreshing change of pace. It's a gorgeous, fast-paced space adventure where exploration feels meaningful and combat always keeps you on your toes. Perfect for anyone who's ever dreamed of being a space rogue. Well everyone, that was all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Now I will see you in the next one. Have a great day.